Hi, this is Vijay Kumar from Naris Technologies. In today's session, I am explaining about uh, cursor. What is cursor and what for cursors are used? Okay. Cursors are mainly classified into two types. One is explicit, another one implicit. So, there are two types explicit cursor and implicit cursor. So, cursor declared by user is called explicit and cursor declared by oracle is called implicit cursor. So, if you declare the cursor it is called explicit, if oracle declared the cursor it is called implicit cursor. In one of the video session, I explained about implicit cursor and today's session I am going to explain about explicit cursor. I already explained about implicit, I am explaining explicit cursor. So, what is the explicit cursor and what is the need of explicit cursor and why we use and how to use explicit cursor in a PLS SQL program then. So, like for example, suppose in PLS SQL program I want name, I want employee name. If you want employee name, take one variable and declare this variable as varchat2. Okay. In PLS skill program, I want employee name. So, take one variable of varchat2 type and get the employee name from database table and store the employee name into this variable. I want name and salary, I want name and salary. So, take two variables, one for name, one for salary. So, take two variables, one is variable for name variable for salary, variable for name is varchat type, variable for salary is number type, take two variables. So, get the data and store the data into this variable. Okay. So, not name and salary, I want complete row, I want complete row. For example, I want one particular employee row, for example, select star from EMP where employee number equal to 7566. I want this complete row. So, this is one row, I want this complete row in PLS skill program. So, then to take one variable, the variable is row type variable, declare this variable as EMP row type. Now, get the record from table and store the record into this variable, not one employee record, I want all the records. So, for example, if you take this table, this table contains some this table contains 12 rows, I want all these 12 records in PLS SQL program. So, I want all these 12 records in PLS SQL program, then take cursor. Okay. So, you want only employee name, take one variable of name type. I want name and salary, take two variables, one for name, one for salary. And I want complete row, so take row type variable. I want all the records, take cursor. So, when we use cursor, so in PLS SQL program, so, if you want to process multiple records, then cursor comes into the picture. So, whenever you want to process multiple records, like I want to pass, I want to process all the employee records, then we use cursor. Okay? Then, like suppose if you execute this query in SQL, select star from EMP, then what happens is in one shot, it returns all the records from EMP table. Okay? When you uh, run this query selects are from EMP, in one shot it returns all the records from EMP table. But in PLS skill program what I want is, I want one by one record, I want to access one by one record. Okay. First I want to go to the first record, I want to process the first record, next I want to go to the second record, I want to process the second record, next I want to go to the third record, I want to process the third record. So, I want to process row by row. So, in PLS skill program, whenever you want to process row by row, then use what cursor, okay, then. But, so how to use cursor? To use cursor, then you need to follow some steps. So, in PLS skill program, if you want to use cursor, you need to follow some steps. So, what are the steps? The first one, you need to declare the cursor, next you need to open cursor, and you need to fetch records from cursor and once fetching is completed, then close. So, if you want to use cursor in your program, you have to follow these steps. So, first what? Declare cursor, open cursor, fetch records from cursor, 
next close cursor okay then so let us see one by one first one declaring cursor when cursor is declared then how to declare the cursor like cursor c1 is select star from emp okay so this is how you declare a cursor cursor c1 is select star from emp so cursor is always declared with a select statement that means cursor c1 is associated with a select statement in declaration what you are doing is assigning a select statement to cursor c1 so what the select statement is assigned to c1 select star from emp okay then so the select star from emp select statement is assigned to this cursor c1 so why you assign select star from emp to c1 because i want to process the records of emp table so that's why this select statement is assigned to c1 so whichever the records you want to process assign that to c1 next so in the declaration part only you are assigning a select statement to c1 so but data is not loaded at the time of declaration so when data is loaded so the data loads into the cursor when you open the cursor how to open cursor to open cursor open cursor name okay so how to open cursor you have to open the cursor like this open cursor name example open c1 so cursor is open so when cursor is open what happens when the statement is executed what happens so the first step when the statement is executed the select star from emp query is sent to oracle server when open statement is executed what happens is the first step the select statement is submitted to oracle server and oracle server execute this query okay the select statement is submitted to oracle oracle will execute this query and the data written by this query is loaded into some temporary memory area okay then the first step the select statement is submitted to oracle server and next oracle execute the query and data written by this query is loaded into temporary memory area and the temporary memory area is called context area so where this context area is created this context area is created in pga what is pga stands for pga stands for program global area okay then so oracle execute the query the select star from emp query is executed and the records written by this query are loaded into context area so that is temporary memory area where this temporary memory area is created pga so program global area so then next the cursor c1 the cursor c1 is points to the okay okay the cursor c1 points to this context area so this three steps this three things happens when you declare a, when you sorry when you open a cursor the first step is select statement is submitted to oracle server and next oracle executes the query data written by this query is loaded into temporary memory area called context area so that context area is created in pga and the third one cursor c1 points to that context area now so once the cursor c1 once data is copied to the context area now what we can do is we can process the data so so where is the data the data is there in what pga okay the data is there in pga and my program wants to process the data so if the program wants to process the data and fetch the data from pga to plsql program how to fetch data from this context area so we use a fetch statement okay what the next step is fetching records fetching records from cursor so how to fetch records from cursor okay now the records are there in context area temporary memory cursor is pointing that context area i want to fetch data from that context area so what statement is used the fetch statement is used used to fetch records from cursor or you can say context area i am saying that context area as cursor then fetch statement is used to fetch records from cursor and how to use fetch statement fetch cursor name fetch cursor name into some variables 
fetch cursor name into some variables like for example fetch c1 into x comma y comma z so on okay then first time this fetch statement is executed first record is fetched and the first record values are assigned to these variables second time this fetch statement is executed second record is fetched and the values are assigned to these variables and third time fetch statement is executed third record is fetched and the values are assigned to this variable so every time fetch statement executes one record is fetched and the values are assigned to these variables okay so every time fetch statement is executed a record is fetched from cursor and the record is stored into these variables so a fetch statement fetches only one record at a time but i am writing this program to process multiple records okay so then fetch statement should be executed number of times to execute the fetch statement number of times keep the fetch statement inside a loop so keep the fetch statement inside a loop either while loop or for loop or like sim so keep the fetch statement inside a loop then so once fetching is completed so all records are fetched and all the records are processed when when fetching is completed when processing is completed then i don't want the cursor then close the cursor so what the last step closing cursor how to close cursor close cursor name for example close c1 the cursor c1 is what closed okay so these are the steps a developer has to follow so if if he wants to use cursor in his program so when he wants to use cursor so whenever he wants to process multiple records in pls skill program so he must use cursor okay and to use cursor he has to follow these steps what the first one is so declare the cursor open the cursor fetch records from cursor close cursor okay then so this is how you declare a cursor and this is how to open a cursor when declaration just you are assigning a select statement when cursor is open so the cursor is filled with what data next and once the data is filled into cursor next what we do we fetch data from cursor to this pls skill program by using fetch statement so once fetching is also completed then cursor is closed i'm taking one example then <clears throat> and uh, see this here i want to print all the employee names and salaries so what i'm doing is i am declaring a cursor declare cursor c1 is select e name comma salary from emp so one cursor is declared so like and cursor is declared with select statement and what is the select statement it ends employee names and salaries i need two variables one variable for name and one variable for salary we shall emp dot sal percentage type taking two variables one for name one for salary what i am doing is opening the cursor open c1 cursor is open after opening the cursor and this uh, uh, the select statement is sent to oracle oracle will execute this query and return the data employee names and salaries the data written by this query is copied to context area that is created in pga and we are giving the name to that context area the name given to that context area is what c1 so this is the name given to that context area so then next once data is once data is loaded into context area now i want to fetch the data from that context area to this plsql program so what i am doing is i am using a loop loop what fetch c1 into ve name comma v cell so first time this fetch statement is executed the first record is fetched from cursor and what that record consists of the record consists of two values one value is name one value is salary and the name is assigned to the variable v name and the salary assigned to the variable v sal so the first time fetch statement is executed fetches first record and the that record consists of two values and the first value is assigned to v name and second value is assigned to v sal next so when loop is there compulsory what must be there exit condition must be there when you want to exit from this loop i want to exit from this loop when fetch is unsuccessful i want to exit from this loop when fetch is unsuccessful so how to give that condition c1 percentage not found 
exit when C1 percent is not found. So, what is C1 percent is not found is this returns true if H is unsuccessful, okay. Then C1 percent is not found returns true, it is a cursor attribute and this attribute returns true if H is unsuccessful. Suppose assume the cursor contains 5 records and first time this statement fetches first record. What is C1 percent is not found is false. If this condition false loop is continued, condition true loop terminates. Then this condition false loop continues and first statement fetches second record, condition false loop continues. First statement fetches third record, condition false continues. Fourth record, condition false continues. Fifth record, condition false continues. First statement fetches six record, but six record is not there in the cursor. The cursor contains only five records, but six record is not there and the first statement returns what? So, first statement cannot fetch the six record because six record is not there and first statement fails. When first statement fails, C1 percent is not found returns what? True. So, when this is true and the loop is exited, exit when this condition is true, when this condition true loop terminates, when condition false loop continues. So, every time what I want to do is I want to print employee names and salary. So, dbms output dot put underscore line ve name next space v sal next n loop then once once this processing is completed and close the cursor. So, simple the using cursor in PLS skill program is simple uh, like working with uh, files like if you want to work with file first declare the file variable, open the file, read and write the data, once reading writing is completed and close the file. So, however, like uh, working with files the same way working with cursor, working with cursor is same as working with file. Now, so let me run this program. So, I will execute this program and before executing this program, so what I am doing is setting the server output on. Now, so what is this printing? This is printing all the employee names and salaries, okay. So, that is what, so in PLS skill program, whenever you want to process multiple records, then use cursor. So, thank you, thank you for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe to Naresh IT.